Shalom. This week we are up to Parshat Bechukotai, which is the last Torah portion in the book of Vayikra. It begins in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 3. And the majority of this week's Torah portion is all about the blessings and the curses. And the first reaction that we might have is it might seem odd to us that this is the conclusion of the book of Vayikra. What does this subject have to do with the bulk of the material that we've been studying in Leviticus, and is this really the proper place for it? But the more we think about it, the more we realize how perfect it is, because Sefer Vayikra, the book of Leviticus, is really the part of the Torah, which is the manual for running the world on so many levels, because the whole concept of the offerings reveals the true nature of the relationship that man has with God. There are so many important underpinning so many valuable lessons and ideas about the nature of the world that we learn from that developing relationship in the Holy Temple. And really, essentially, the book of Leviticus is all about these, these um, fine lines of demarcation in creation. And it's really calling us to a higher and more noble purpose in life. So it could be said that everything that we've been instructed in Vayikra, regarding the uh, service of the Kohanim, the priests in the Holy Temple, and how to kind of anchor in the Divine Presence in this world and be able to have this reciprocity with the Divine Presence in this world, this is really the program. It's the program of life, the program of humanity, and thus. It's fitting for us to have some sort of uh, equation, some sort of understanding as to what is lying in the balance, what is hanging in the balance if this program is not properly executed. What the whole thing is really all about, it's this program for the elevation of life, and it's not optional, it's not something that we can pick and choose, it's, it's what we have, it's the reality of who we are as Israel, Israel's relationship with the world, everything is really hanging in the balance, the fate of humanity and the blessings and the curses are part of, rather, the blessings and the admonition, it's part of a cause and effect relationship of how seriously we take our responsibility. So, the truth is that when we read the Torah portion in the very beginning, we read these very beautiful blessings. They're very, very concise. And they don't go into that much detail. They're really very beautiful um, if you will follow my decrees and observe my commandments and perform them, then I will provide your rains in their time, and the land will give its produce, and the tree of the field will give its fruits. Your threshing will last until the vintage, and the vintage will last until the sowing. You will eat your bread to sati, and you will dwell securely in your land. And then we have the blessings of peace and victory over our, enemy, our enemies, and eventually you will eat very old grain and remove the old to make way for the new. I will place my sanctuary among you and my spirit will not reject you. I will walk among you. I will be a God unto you. You will be a people unto me. And so really these blessings, we see this tremendous bounty, this prosperity. We see this idea of peace and security, true security, all leading towards the, the state of, of perfection of the indwelling of the Divine Presence and the Holy Temple. Whereas, when we come to the sections regarding the tochacha, the admonition, curses some people call it, we find that these are increasing, increasing in their severity. There are a number of different stages um, which are caused by Israel rejecting God's covenant and something that's emphasized over and over again, caused by Israel acting from pride and what God calls here acting with a sense of casualness. Now, when talking about this week's Parsha, a lot of people are emphasizing the tochachot because they're very deep. Obviously, there's a lot of meaning in between the lines going on with these awesome, hair-raising admonitions, curses, whatever we call them. So people are very much involved um, in the exposition of these verses. What do they mean? And is this going to happen? Is it going to happen soon? Is it happening now? Did it happen already? Has it come to pass? And I don't want to do that at all. It doesn't do it for me. I want to spend our time 
um, thinking about the blessings and looking at the concept of of blessings and trying to understand just that one um, idea. And we'll leave the end of the world and all of the curses um, to everybody else right now for several reasons. One reason is because the truth is, honestly, everything's for the good. Everything that God does and causes and, and allows Israel to um, be involved with is ultimately, ultimately, ultimately for our good. Second of all, at the conclusion of this Torah portion, God clearly calls upon Israel to develop a feeling heart, tells us that he will remember the covenants. Thirdly, honestly, we only have ourselves to blame for any negativity in our lives. And anyway, this whole thing with these, with these horrific warnings, this is not about God abandoning us, it's not about God hating us, or God trying to do us in. That is absolutely not even something to consider, because this is all a product of God's wanting Israel to come closer to him and to understand this cause and effect, to understand our relationship with him and to understand that ultimately everything has to be for the good. And we have to plug ourselves in to the potential of the blessings. So the truth is we're all used to expressions like, you know, um, a blessing disguised as a curse and mixed blessings. So what is a blessing really? What is the concept of a blessing anyway really all about? We remember from the book of Numbers, chapters 20 through 22, chapters 23 and 24 in the book of Numbers, the whole um, story of Bilam, the wicked heathen prophet that cursed the Jewish people, that was hired to curse the Jewish people, that wanted very deeply to fulfill that, that obligation and curse the Jewish people, but instead um, it, were, it were blessings that came out from his mouth, and in fact some of the most beautiful blessings in the Torah. So those were blessings that maybe he tried to disguise as curse or intended as curses, but they came out as blessings. And there's also an idea of maybe a blessing that we don't understand, a blessing that sounds like something very severe, but in the end we see what its true nature was. That reminds me of a very moving story that was published in a book. The book is called Hasidic Tales of the Holocaust. It was published in 1982 by Professor Yaffa Eliyach. A very amazing story there. And these are first-person eyewitness testimonies and recollections of personal experience that took place during the years of the Holocaust. And there's one particular story there about the great rabbi of Munkach. Munkach was a city in Hungary, and the rabbi of Munkach was known to have been a very holy, saintly person. But he had some opposition, and this has to do with uh, schools of thought and different approaches to different ideas. So, apparently, uh, this particular rabbi, the rabbi of Munkach, he had a particular foe, uh, kind of like a, an enemy, as it were, another, another Jew, a, a chassid of another discipline, Bells, and they had this ongoing feud. It was, must have been about all kinds of philosophical ideas, but one day, during a lively argument, the Munkacha rabbi turned around, and in a moment of anger, he said to this other fellow, his name was Moshe Silber, this Bells or chassid, he said to him, you'll die with your talit katan on. Talit katan is the tzitzit, the small fringed garment that we wear under our clothing. And he said to him, you're going to die with your talit katan on. And this fellow, Moshe Silber, this Belzer chassid, he always remembered that, that he told, he told him those harsh words. In the meantime, years passed, World War II engulfed Europe, and in April 1944, a brutal deportation was initiated in the Munkach. And by May 30th, the city was pronounced Judenrein, the ghetto was liqu liquidated, and all Jews were deported to Auschwitz, including this fellow, Moshe Silber. Throughout all his years in Auschwitz, despite the hunger and disease and slave labor and constant threat of selections, he was absolutely sure that he was going to survive the war, because in Auschwitz it was impossible to wear a tzalit katan. And it was punishable by death to do so, and he knew, despite his differences with the Munkacher rabbi, and despite whatever argument they were having, he knew that the Munkacher rabbi was a great tzaddik, 
and he was a very holy man and he knew that if he spoke those words his words have to be fulfilled and he was sure that death had no power over him in Auschwitz because he could not possibly be wearing a Tawit Katan and he even began to realize very quickly that the Munkacha rabbi who had a feud with him saw all of this coming and knew very well what he was saying when he cursed him that he would die wearing his Talit Katan, his ritual garments. Anyway, the story ends in 1977. This interview takes place in New York where this man is recalling the miraculous powers of his former adversary while wearing his Talit Katan and thanking God that he was delivered from that inferno. So that's an example of a curse that was really a blessing. And then, on the other hand, there are actually blessings that are curses. For example, in Ecclesiastes 5.12, we read about riches, wealth, that are hoarded, that are saved up by a person which will ultimately trip him up, which will actually be for evil. There could be such a thing as a situation where a person is very wealthy and very prosperous, but that will be his end. That will be the end of him. And so, too, we read in the book of Deuteronomy, something very apropos, where we read in Ha'azinu, in the song of Moshe, in chapter 32 and verse 15, regarding Israel, Yeshurun became fat and kicked. You became fat, you became thick, you became corpulent, and it deserted God, its maker. And the idea being that when a person has everything good, when we have prosperity, when we have the blessing of of satiety, it's very natural for a person to begin to think, I did this. I don't need anyone. I don't need God. This is something that I created. This is something becomes a, a, an obstacle for a person achieving spiritual continuity and connection to, to God because it becomes really something that divides us from Him, the very thing that He gives us. And so on this level, the real beauty of the blessings in the beginning of our Parsha, where God tells us about how He will give us the rain in their time and how all of this physical blessing will be brought upon our land. And f first of all, we have to realize these blessings are not exclusive to Israel. These blessings will come to the whole world through Israel. And so this is a, a very, in itself, important point. Israel receives these blessings by following God's commandments and by living the life dedicated to His will in the land of Israel. And from the land of Israel, all of this state of perfection and blessing flows out to all humanity. But the real blessing is that after God gives us everything that we need and the covenant is established and we're fruitful and increased and all of these blessings of, of prosperity he says, I will place my sanctuary among you and my spirit will not reject you. I will walk among you. I will be a God unto you and you will be a people unto me. The idea is, the deepest level of the blessing is that you will know where all of this is coming from. And this in itself is such an amazing idea that even though you will have it so good and you will have these beautiful blessings, you won't forget me. And they will not distract you from focusing on my presence, on my sanctuary, on my being your God, but on the contrary, the blessings themselves will bring you closer and closer to a consciousness, to a recognition, to a realization of my relationship with you, God says. And that is the deepest level of understanding these blessings, that, that the recognition and the knowledge and the understanding of where the blessings are coming from itself will be for us such a revelation that's the highest level of blessing of all.